Over the last 12 years, I've slowly gained muscle without ever gaining too much fat. I've been heavier with more body fat. At my heaviest in 2021, I was 85 kilograms, but I never lost visible definition in my abs and I never got a big waist circumference. Today, I'm sitting at around 78 kilograms and around 8 to 9 percent body fat. The traditional view on building muscle is that you need to go on a quote unquote bulk. You start eating a lot more food and calories while lifting weights to bulk up. Then, before summer, you go on a quote unquote cut to lose the fat and you hope that your bulking period made you build sufficient amount of muscle and the cut isn't going to make you lose too much muscle. What I realized is that this is completely unnecessary and is much easier to stay lean year round while building muscle. It's also much healthier for you in the long term to not get fat and always stay around 10 to 12 percent body fat. In this video I'm going to share with you how you can avoid this cutting and bulking purgatory and gain muscle without gaining too much fat in the process. And in the end, I'll share a visual guide to know if you need to build muscle or cut. So make sure you watch until the end. First, I want to share with you a great study that showed how traditional bulking is much less effective than people think. In this 2013 randomized controlled trial on elite athletes, they found that eating 600 more calories per day resulted in only marginal gains in lean body mass, which didn't differ that much from those eating however they wanted, plus 2.8% versus 1.9%. What's even crazier was that the athletes eating 600 more calories gained a significant amount of body fat, plus 15%, compared to the plus 3% of the control group. When it came to physical performance and strength, then yes, the athletes eating 600 more calories did get stronger on the bench and bench pull, but there were no statistical differences between the groups. And the control group actually saw greater improvements in the barbell back squat, 40 meter sprint, and counter movement jump. So there were only marginal improvements in the bulking group when it came to muscle mass and strength. But there was a massive difference in how much fat the athletes gained when they were eating at a 600 calorie surplus. Yes, if you want to become as strong as a powerlifter and you don't care about being lean or healthy, then yes, eating a bunch of extra calories and gaining weight will make you build more muscle and strength than if you were to try to do that while being in a smaller surplus or at calorie maintenance and staying lean at the same time. However, you have to realize that it is possible to gain muscle and strength without gaining too much fat and while even losing losing some body fat at the same time. I've done it over the last 12 years. I've never been fat or lost some definition in the abs. It's just that 12 years is a very long time to get an impressive physique, which is what most people don't have the patience for. The main idea is that you don't need to be in a massive surplus of calories and gain a bunch of fat to build muscle. In fact, you don't need to gain almost any fat. So how do you do it? We have to look at what drives muscle growth in the first place. There are three major factors that drive muscle growth, and they are mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. Mechanical tension essentially means lifting something sufficiently heavy for sufficient amount of time to recruit muscle fibers at near maximum tension. This causes muscle fibers to strain. As a result, muscle satellite cells and the main growth pathway in the body mTOR become activated to stimulate the expression of protein synthesis. However, to keep on building more muscle, your body needs to experience progressive overload, which describes increasing the tension over time. Basically, you need to get stronger and you can't be lifting the same weight to continue continue building muscle. You can maintain muscle without progressive overload, but to keep building new muscle, you need progressive overload delivered via mechanical tension. You can apply progressive overload by doing more reps, lifting heavier weights, doing more sets, or working out more frequently. They all can build muscle and strength. Research has shown that you can build muscle with light weights and high reps, as well as heavy weights and low reps. It really comes down to which method you prefer. In the context of body recomposition, of trying to increase lean body mass and decrease fat mass, you would want to place a bigger emphasis on training. Because training is by far the biggest signal for muscle growth especially if you're a natural. I personally prefer focusing more on strength training and I find it superior for muscle growth with minimal fat gain because it tends to work better in my experience. Focusing on just the big compound lifts like squats, deadlift, bench, overhead press, pull-ups, etc. You'll be building muscle in the most time efficient and calorie efficient manner. Granted, you're not as strong being lean when you're 10 kilos overweight, but you will be providing greater mechanical tension with strength training. That means slightly heavier weights and lower reps, compared to doing higher reps and lighter weights. Although the research suggests that there's not much difference as long as you apply sufficient amount of mechanical tension, I find that naturals respond better to strength training. So find a weight you can lift for about 4 to 6 reps, repeat for 3 to 5 sets, and do it with about 2 to 3 main compound lifts about 3 to 4 times a week. Throughout the 12 years that I've lifted, I've focused predominantly on this kind of a rep schematic. 
and workout plan. I follow the push pull leg split. Workout day one, pushing muscles with bench press and overhead press. Workout day two, legs with barbell back squats and Romanian deadlifts. Workout day three, pulling muscles with pull ups, deadlifts, and barbell rows. Yes, I finish every workout with some accessory exercises like side lateral raises or forearm curls or calf raises, but they're only a finisher that takes about five to ten minutes. That's it. I find that overtraining or going to failure with every exercise is actually somewhat counterproductive. I personally find that I always build more muscle if I just focus on the four to six reps, which is going to be something like 75 to 80 percent of my one repetition maximum. But some people might be different. One thing is certain, if you want to build muscle while losing fat, your body needs to have a reason for that. And you create that reason with the training. If you don't apply sufficient mechanical tension and progressive overload, then being in a calorie deficit will result in greater muscle loss. But you can mitigate that with proper training and sufficient amounts of volume and tension. But building muscle and losing fat isn't only affected by training. There are other variables like diet, supplements and sleep that direct the body towards either greater fat loss or greater muscle growth. The biggest variable is obviously diet. In the context of gaining muscle and losing fat, then once you're already lifting weights, the second determining variable is calorie intake. If you eat in a calorie surplus, you begin gaining weight slowly. And if you're in a calorie deficit, you begin losing weight. As you recall from the study earlier, eating 600 calories more resulted in predominantly fat gain and only marginal benefits in muscle and strength. So I would say that 600 calories is excessive of a surplus for gaining muscle while minimizing fat gain. For minimizing fat gain, you'd want a smaller surplus of less than 500 calories even as little as 100 to 200 calorie surplus is enough in my experience. The same thing with cutting. If you're in a 1000 calorie deficit, then you might lose too much weight too aggressively and you end up losing more muscle than necessary. So a smaller and slower calorie deficit is again more effective in muscle preservation, but it requires more patience and time. How do you know how many calories to eat? I found this free calculator at calculator.net and it calculates it for you based on your age, height, weight and activity levels. I tried it out myself and I found it to be quite accurate. It's not necessary to track your calories, but it certainly would be more accurate. An alternative to tracking calories is following mini bulking and mini cutting cycles. For example, two weeks I'm in a 500 calorie surplus, which means I just eat a little bit more, and two weeks I'm in a 200 to 300 calorie deficit, which means I just eat less. This way you build muscle for two weeks steadily, and then you trim down the extra fat in the next two weeks without losing muscle. I've been practicing this idea over the last 12 years, and it works amazing. You could even do it between workout days. On the days you lift weights, you eat a little bit more, about 500 calorie surplus, and on the rest days you eat in a small deficit. This is step one, realize how many calories you need to eat to either build muscle or lose fat and then create the targets for the bulking period and the cutting period. I'll be discussing whether or not you should bulk or cut first later in the video. So make sure you watch until the end and click the like and subscribe. Step two is finding your macronutrient ratios because they can also affect muscle growth greatly. A high protein diet is obviously the best for muscle growth. And if you're under eating protein, you're leaving gains on the table, especially when dieting. Research has found that the protein intake that maximizes muscle growth is 0.8 grams per pound or 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. If you eat less than that, then you're leaving gains on the table. But if you eat more than that, then there's no difference. In the context of body recomposition, it's highly recommended to lean more towards the higher intake of protein to mitigate any possible muscle loss, which is why if you're eating in a calorie deficit, you might even want to eat up to one gram per pound or two grams per kilogram. Meal frequency can also affect body composition and muscle growth. The current consensus is that four meals a day maximizes protein synthesis for natural athletes. So if you stimulate protein synthesis by eating 30 grams of protein four times a day, you're expecting to gain the most muscle. Eating once or twice a day isn't inherently harmful and you can still build muscle with that, especially if you're overweight, but it's likely going to be less effective than four meals a day. Eating more than four meals a day doesn't appear to provide additional benefits. A recent 2023 study showed that you can absorb and utilize 100 grams of protein in one sitting and that it's going to increase protein synthesis for the next 12 hours. This means that you're at least not going to lose muscle by having only a single large meal of 100 grams of protein, but it's probably not as optimal as four meals of 30 grams each. If you're at a greater calorie deficit, then four meals is probably better for muscle maintenance and growth than one very large meal. What about carbohydrates and fats? These macros are much less important than protein. If you meet your protein demand, then you can pretty much get the rest of your calories from either carbs or fats. However, getting a certain amount of carbs and fats is going to optimize your testosterone and other hormones. This will have a positive effect on body recomposition by making you build more muscle and burn more fat. For example, it's found that a low fat intake of 20% or lower results in lower testosterone 
compared to 40% intake. A 2021 review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that diets below 40% of calories as fat results in lower testosterone production in men. There doesn't appear to be much benefit to going over 40%, but going below that can result in slightly lower testosterone. A 2024 review and meta-analysis found no effect of carbohydrate intake on strength development, which means that you can build muscle and strength on a low-carb diet. However, most people will be stronger when they're eating carbohydrates. But going too low carb can also have a negative effect on testosterone, especially in the context of a high protein diet. A 2022 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials discovered that moderate protein, less than 35% of total calories, and low carb diets had no effects on testosterone levels. But a high protein diet, over 35% of total calories, and a low carb diet decreased testosterone by about 150 nanograms per deciliter. Low carb diets also resulted in higher cortisol levels than the high carb diets. And low carb diets increase SHBG, which is a protein that lowers free testosterone levels. And high carb diets typically result in lower SHB levels, which increases testosterone. There's also interesting studies showing that increasing olive oil intake can result in greater fat loss and a slimmer waist circumference even without calorie restriction. In a 2024 randomized controlled trial, 32 obese women ate equal amounts of calories, protein, carbs, and fiber, but different amounts of fat from either fish or olive oil. The group eating olive oil lost 1.1 kilograms more fat and their waist circumference was 1.91 centimeters smaller. So it appears that the type of fat can also affect nutrient partitioning and fat loss. Next, sleep also affects what your body does with the food that you eat, which then affects body composition. It's found that sleep restriction, sleeping less than 6 hours, results in greater muscle loss and greater fat mass gain, which is the opposite of what you want. In this 2018 randomized controlled trial, even one hour of sleep restriction on five nights a week led to a greater proportion of muscle loss and less fat loss during calorie restriction in overweight and obese subjects. This means that even if you're in a calorie deficit and you're losing weight, if you sleep less than 6 hours, that weight loss will be higher in muscle loss than fat loss. To prevent that, aim for 7-8 to eight hours of sleep every night. This will improve your performance at the gym, enabling you to reach progressive overload easier, and it will also optimize your hormones and insulin sensitivity, which makes it more likely that the food you eat goes to muscle, not fat. From a supplement perspective, then creatine is obviously the most notorious supplement for muscle growth and for a good reason. Taking creatine can quickly result in increased increased lean muscle tissue as shown by hundreds of studies, especially if you combine it with resistance training. Granted, a lot of it can come from water retention in the muscles, but a significant proportion of weight gain seen from creatine comes from muscle gain. Creatine supplementation has also been seen to result in fat loss. In a 2019 meta-analysis, men over the age of 50 lost 500 grams of fat mass when taking creatine compared to placebo. Another 2024 review concluded that creatine supplementation combined with resistance training results in about 1.1 kilogram extra muscle gain and 0.88% reduction in body fat percentage and 0.73 kilogram body fat mass reduction compared to resistance training alone. It means that by starting to take creatine, you can expect to build lean muscle tissue and lose some fat mass. Caffeine Caffeine intake can also have favorable effects not on muscle growth but on fat loss. Caffeine is known to increase your metabolic rate and total daily energy expenditure. Caffeine also increases fat oxidation so it can favor greater fat loss if you're at an energy deficit or maintenance. A 2019 systematic review and meta-analysis on caffeine intake and weight loss found that caffeine intake promotes weight, BMI and body fat reduction. The average weight loss was 2 kilograms after 4 weeks compared to the control group. So caffeine intake can enhance fat oxidation and energy expenditure, which makes it easier to lose fat. There's also meta-analyses showing that acute caffeine ingestion increases strength and power. This enables you to apply greater mechanical tension, resulting in greater muscle growth. Caffeine or coffee don't promote protein synthesis or muscle growth directly, but they don't inhibit it either, as shown by animal studies. Caffeine just enables you to train harder. Green tea also promotes greater abdominal fat loss when combined with exercise compared to exercise alone. So, drinking green tea can be useful during a weight loss phase. I made a recent video showing how green tea is also very effective in reducing visceral fat and fat around the organs, which tends to increase when you gain weight or when you're bulking. So, you could drink green tea during bulking to mitigate 
navigate the visceral fat gain. I want to take a quick break to let you know that you can now get my new book, The Longevity Leap, on Amazon. It contains 24 chapters ranging from the biology of aging to all the major chronic diseases such as heart disease, kidney disease, neurodegeneration, and I also cover over 70 clinically relevant biomarkers for chronic diseases and their optimal ranges. You can get the book from the link in the description. Next, let's talk about when do you know if you should gain weight or lose weight. One obvious way is to look at your body fat percentage. I made a recent video about this based on DEXA scan results from Menno Henselmann's Instagram. A healthy body fat percentage for men is below 15% and for women between 20 to 35%. You could just use the mirror to guesstimate how much body fat you have and then decide whether or not you should lose or gain weight. You can also use a free body fat calculator from the same website calculator.net where you put in your age, weight, height, neck circumference and waist circumference and you'll get a pretty good estimation of your body fat percentage. It's not as accurate as a DEXA scan but it's free. As a man the signal for you to start cutting down weight is above 15% body fat which you can see from my photo back when I was 22 years old and the signal for you to start gaining some weight is somewhere around 8% body fat which you can see from my photo last year when I was 29 years old. This is what I've been doing over the last 12 years. I'm not trying to build muscle right now and I'm also already very lean so I'm not trying to really lose weight. My main goal right now is maintaining, maintaining this weight while perhaps increasing my lean body mass by focusing on strength training. There are cases where you want to obviously eat more calories and bulk and there are cases where you need to cut. So let's talk about who should bulk by eating over 500 calories per day. You want to get freakishly strong and you don't care about health or being lean. These are your powerlifters and strongmen who just want to lift as much weight as possible. If that's your goal, then that's fine. Just realize that to maximize your strength, you would probably be best off by being somewhere between 20 to 25% body fat. But you would also have to accept that you won't be lean. Secondly, you're severely malnourished and underweight. I'm talking about a BMI below 20 or 18. You're super skinny and frail. This is where eating a large surplus of calories would even prevent you from gaining that much body fat, as long as you do resistance training. If you're very malnourished or you come from a period of prolonged calorie restriction, then eating massive amounts of food will predominantly result in muscle growth and minimal fat gain. And that's pretty much it. I don't think that anyone else would really need to do these kind of crazy box. So who would benefit from this leaner body recomposition style? You eat around your maintenance or you just eat up to 300 extra calories per day on the lifting days and then you cut down. Number one, you're lean but you want to slowly build muscle and strength. Yes, eating massive amounts of calories would achieve that goal but you would also become fat in the process. By eating a small surplus, you can keep the leanness while gaining muscle. It just takes more time. Secondly, you're an elderly person who's at risk of frailty because of aging. As an older person, you don't have to eat massive amounts of calories to build and maintain muscle but you do probably need a bit more protein and you don't want to lose weight. And three, you're slightly above of your ideal body fat percentage. Let's say you're 15% body fat but you would still want to gain some muscle and strength. This is another case where you can apply the recomp method and over time you can expect to lose fat and build muscle. What I recommend though is that if you're around 15% body fat and you don't want to gain more fat then stick to your maintenance calories or 100 to 200 calories less. With 15% body fat you can still build muscle while losing fat as long as you do resistance training. And lastly who should eat at a small calorie deficit to focus on the fat loss? Number one, if you're overweight, over 15% body fat, eating less while doing resistance training with such high body fat percentage will enable you to build muscle and lose fat at the same time. If you're over 15% body fat and you want to build muscle but not get fat, then eat at a calorie deficit. And secondly, if you're just trying to get more lean, sub 10% body fat, then you should also obviously eat at a small deficit, but your deficit can be less aggressive, around 200 to 300 calorie deficit. That's pretty much it. If you're overweight, eat less. If you want to gain weight, eat more. If you want to maintain weight, then cycle between periods of eating more and eating less or eat at around your maintenance. So here's a quick summary. Number one, eat around your maintenance and let training drive your muscle growth. You don't need to go on crazy bulks that last for months because most of the weight gain will be fat. Number two, aim for progressive overload, getting stronger over time in your training. This is the biggest driver for building muscle without getting unnecessarily fat. Three, adjust your calorie intake based on your body fat percentage. If you're over 15% body fat, then reduce calorie intake. If you're below 10% body fat, then increase calorie intake. Go through these periods of mini bulking and mini cutting. Four, for macros, aim for 1.6 grams per kilogram or 0.8 grams per pound of body weight for protein, 35 to 40% of calories as fat and the rest from carbs, which would be somewhere 40 to 45%. Five, prioritize sleep and recovery. Don't sleep deprive yourself and aim for seven to eight hours because you need it for the recovery from training. And six, take creatine monohydrate. Around three to five grams is a typical dose, but the most optimal dose is 100 milligrams per kilogram 
kilogram of lean body weight. That's pretty much it. Lastly, you could also say that keep doing this for the next 10 years to see compounding benefits. Because yes, this recomp method takes a lot more time but it's a healthier approach and it also prevents you from going through these different kinds of bulking and cutting cycles. If you want to know how I reduce my visceral fat from good to great, then check out this video. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.